Goodbye! You really do make too much fuss of her, Aunt Letty. Why, Julia, Philippa has been through rather a lot lately. Tell me, what's wrong with trying to make life a bit more pleasant? Nothing, I suppose. Such a little thing, waving goodbye, but it helps. I do the same for you. I'm family. Oh, Aunt Julia, sounds as if you're jealous. Me? Certainly not. But she is only a lodger. Come to that. So are you. Look, I was pleased to have you here. Just as pleased to have Philippa. She had a lot to contend with. How would you feel if your husband had died so young, leaving you with only a child? I don't know. I wouldn't gotten married in my teens. I'm not so daft. Oh, trouble is, we're not all as worldly as you are, Julia. I'm sorry, Aunt Betty. Oh, there's no need. No, no, I've been spiteful, and believe it or not, I rather like Philippa. We seem to be on the same wavelength. But you really do make too much fuss, of all of us. I like having young people around me, so when your mother wrote to me asking if you could stay here, I was delighted. It meant I could indulge myself. I can't find it, Letty! I can't find it anywhere! What is it, dear? It's Friday. All day, dear? Yes. Friday the 13th, to be precise. Ominous. Oh, dear. What was I saying, Letty? You couldn't find it, Bunny dear. Exactly. I can't find it anywhere. Have you seen it? Let's start from the beginning. It's Friday. I always read it Friday morning after breakfast. Oh, the Gazette, you mean? Of course, that's what I've been telling you. Yes, dear. I can't find the Chippy Leghorn Gazette anywhere. You don't think they've gone on strike, do you? They wouldn't do that here. What a lovely thought. A strike. Here. Picket lines, headlines in the national press. We might even be on the wires. Reporters on the Chipping Click Hunk Gazette refused to report Vicar's garden party. Looks like that don't happen here. No, nothing happens here. It's another world, isn't it? And just as well, too. Listen to this. It's marvelous. Absolutely, absolutely marvelous. Oh, do tell us what it is, Patrick. We're all dying to know. Oh, dear. We are in a bad mood, are we? Have a bad dream last night? A nightmare. It was all about you. Well, it's better than being ignored. What's so marvelous, <laughs> Patrick? The person who called me this rag on, Letty. It's better than Evelyn's home. Listen to this. Young woman said to be excitingly beautiful. Seeks companionship with a mature man. Love, marriage, Rolls Royce, owners only. Really, Bunny? I'm surprised at you. Wouldn't the Bentley owner be just as suitable? You know very well, young man, that Bunny always reads the Gazette first. I don't have any rules in this house, but that's one. She's been looking everywhere for it. Well, she could have borrowed Mitzi's. Mitzi? She thinks it'll help us speak English. Oh dear me, no. I couldn't ask her. I just couldn't. I've only got to walk past the kitchen and she snarled and said to me, I only want to help, that's all. I couldn't ask her. I really couldn't. She's horrid, that's Millie. Mitzi, dear. Yes. Well, you won't have to ask her. It's all yours, Bunny. Thank you, Patrick. And I promise I won't borrow it again. Why aren't you at college? It wouldn't have happened if you'd been at college. I haven't got a lecture to this afternoon. All that grant you get and you never seem to do anything. It's not my fault. Just read your paper, Bunny. You are very lucky, Patrick. I'm quite willing to go to more lectures. It's one giant holiday for him. Oh, thanks for nothing, sister. Anyways, look who's talking about a holiday. You got the whole day off. Only because I worked overtime every night this week. Huh, pull the other one. I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't been working overtime at all. Bend the picture is more likely. My goodness, you two. Did you always bicker like this at home? He did. I did. Letty! Letty! What is it, Bunny? Letty, dear, what does it mean? Oh my goodness, whatever can it mean? I don't know unless you tell me. Here, in the Gazette. Right at the bottom of the personal column. Yes, dear? It's an announcement. How nice. No. No, you don't understand. I know I don't. It says, oh, dear, I can't bear to read it. But you will. Yes. A murder is announced that will take place on Friday, October the 13th at Little Paddocks at 6.30 p.m. Friends, please accept this. The only intimation. Are you sure that's what it says? Right at the bottom. This house? Little paddocks? Yes. Read it again, Mike. A murder is announced and will take place on Friday, October the 13th. 
Today! I knew something dreadful was going to happen. Earlier you were just saying how nothing happens here. Finish it. At Little Paddocks at 6.30 p.m. Friends, please accept this. The only intimation. Oh, let me, let me see. It's a joke! It has to be. I mean, we'll be daft enough to advertise a real murder in the newspapers. A madman might. It's got nothing to do with you, does it, Patrick? I'm not potty. That's debatable. Ha ha. I wouldn't have put it past you. It's got nothing to do with me. Perhaps Philippa can shed some light on it. No, no. It's not the sort of thing she get up to anyway. Well, I agree. Someone seems to think it's amusing. It frightens me. It's nothing to worry about. <laughs> what will happen at 6 30? Delicious death. <gasps> Really, Patrick? Who needs but this special cake? We always call it delicious death. Yes, Mommy. Friends, please accept this. The only intimation. Someone's bound to drop around, and I just thought we'd get in to make one. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Nothing is going to happen at 6.30, Mommy, except Patrick is probably right in suggesting that one or two people may drop in out of curiosity. It might turn into a party. It most certainly won't. So there's nothing to worry about, Mum. Nothing. You really think so? Of course. Oh, good. That makes me feel better. We'll all laugh about it tomorrow, Bunny. Yes. Someone is after me. I'm going to be murdered in my bed. Murder? It is here. It's the Gazette. They are coming for me. Whoever puts that silly advert in the paper obviously did it with precise intention of setting this house into total chaos. There will be blood everywhere. They will cut me up and feed me to the dogs. Poor dogs. It will happen in this very house if I stay tonight. It is here. It's this newspaper. They come to get me at 6.30. You see, they are nothing for the law. They tell everyone they are coming to murder me. No one is coming to murder you. It's a joke. I not laugh. I go. Nevertheless, I don't think this has anything to do with you. You don't know. Once you have escaped, they never let you get away. But I thought you did get away. They hound me. Day and night. Night and day to telephone calls. You find out who they are, where they are from. What telephone calls? Agents from my country. Why? Why do you think they keep phoning me? I expect they want to know how you're getting on over here, Millie. Uh, but, Mitzi, I've never heard you get a telephone call. Say, do it in secret. Say, never leave me alone. Say, don't like it that I escape from them. Oh, you have no idea what it is like. Say, interrogate them for days, weeks, months. The light shining in my eyes. My family, they send them to Siberia. Yes. Mitzi! Do be sensible about this. Nothing is going to happen. No one is going to come after you. No spy, no agent. So calm yourself down. We'll all look after you. Now, this is what I suggest you do. You get that beef out of the pantry and you make that special goulash of yours for lunch. Ooh, you like my goulash, eh? It is simply delicious. I make it extra special for you today. I put in some wine, some rich red wine from Hungary. It makes my mouth water just to think of it. Good. You do that. Incidentally, I suppose someone will be around here at about 6.30 this evening. To murder me? No, no. Why they come? For a drink and a sandwich, perhaps. And you make such good sandwiches. It will be all right. There's nothing to worry about. You're all right. I'm a good cook. No? I make a dip too. Yes, but not too much garlic this time. You not like garlic? Well, yes, but only in moderation. The last time we had that dip, we were totally isolated on church on Sunday. And that was two days after we eaten it. I tell you that, I use only two cloves of garlic this time instead of my usual seven. But it will not be nearly so good. I go now. Too long you've left me here gas bagging. Well done, Aunt Lady. Yes, beautifully handled. How nice to have you two in agreement for once. Letty was always very good with people. She could have gone a long way. Yes, a long way indeed. If only, now, now, Bunny dear, let's not keep reminiscing. Young people aren't interested in the past these days. Oh, dear me, I'm so silly. I get so muddled lately. I'm sorry, Letty. Really and truly sorry. It's all right, Bunny. I wasn't angry with you. But you're so right. Everything's mixed up. I must be more careful and think before I say something. No one mind. We all understand. Read your paper, dear. You know how much you enjoy it. Yes, that's what I'll do. 
But I won't read that advertisement again, Letty. No, no, dear, don't do that. I shan't sleep a wink tonight, though Mitzi could be right. We all might be murdered in our beds. No, no, my dear. The advertisement says 6.30. I don't think any of us will be in our beds by then. Oh, no. We won't, will we? So there's nothing to worry about. We could be murdered down here just as easily as upstairs! Oh, Bonnie! Please don't do that, Letty! <laughs> well then. For a moment there, I could see Mitzi clearing off and me having to do the cooking from now on. And you needn't say anything, thank you very much. I was just thinking what a terrible liar Mitzi is. We all know she doesn't get any phone calls. What about her parents being sent to Siberia? Last time she said they were executed in Red Square. While she stood there in the snow with tears freezing on her cheeks. We must be sympathetic towards her. She's lonely. Life can be pretty miserable with no one you can talk to, no one from your background, I suppose that's why she makes up all those stories. Lies, you mean? Yes, you do, but I can see why she does it. Why are the stories all such doom, gloom, and disaster? Well, it's what she enjoys. Like how some people enjoy reading a murder mystery. The door is open. I do hope I'm not intruding. Oh, you are all this marble. I only popped in to deliver these to Miss Bunny. Oh, how lovely. You remember, you admired them so at the vicarage the other day. I told my nephew he insisted I bring some along for you. How kind, how very kind. Look, Letty, aren't they lovely? It's so unusual in the autumn. My grandmother was able to grow them right up into the winter months. I adore violets. Yes, there's something very sentimental about them. Don't you think so, Julia? I think you have a very romantic nature about you, Miss Marple. Do you? But I do see what you mean. I don't think Patrick does. There's no romance in his soul. We are only his sister. You wouldn't see even if it was there. Where shall we go, Letty? I want everyone to enjoy them. Oh, how about over here, the sideboard? And there's even a vase waiting for them. Oh, it's already got what's in it. Must be so. I'll get some fresh. Wrote to be minutes. Do sit down, Miss Marple. I am so glad that you called. I was wondering if you wanted to come by on Sunday for Bonnie's birthday party. I know she'd love for you to be here. I love parties. Perhaps there's something I can do to help. I'll be helping out Letty, Miss Marple. I'll be helping out Letty, Miss Marple. Julia, you'll be in bed till noon, and you'll spend the rest of the day snoring in an armchair. So we can't rely on you for any help. <laughs> the announcement in the Gazette. What does it mean? So you've seen it, have you? I should assume everybody in Chipping Clay Corner has seen it by now. Has it anything to do with Miss Bunny's birthday? We have no idea what it means. It's probably some prank who thinks he's being funny. Oh, I see. I thought it was an invitation to play a new sort of game or something. The murder game. Sounds good, doesn't it? If you're interested, Miss Marple, why don't you come round at 6.30? Oh, it's too, Miss Marple. I'd love to, but I have to go into Meddingham Wells for my treatment, and I'm not sure how long it's going to take. I'll do my best, though. Is your rheumatism better? Much, thank you. Spa watches are so good. Give it another week and I shall be back in St. Mary Mead. Shipping Clayhorn won't be the same without you. I shall miss it here. Although I don't think my niece will be over sorry when I leave. She's been very patient with me. Would they like to come tonight? Oh, I'm sure they would. My nephew's very like me. Loves a mystery. But they're having dinner with the bishop. It would have been rather reassuring to have the vicar here. Knowing your neighbors, you won't be alone. Take the Colonel and Miss Easterbrook for a start. No, they're in Bournemouth. Claire Swettenham wouldn't miss an opportunity like this. And young Edmund with two beautiful young girls staying here. There's someone I could do without. And Philippa says he's a lie about. I thought he was a writer. He is, but she says it's an excuse to not work and get a real job for a living. Perhaps she's got a point. <laughs> do thank the vicar for me, Miss Marple. I'm touched, I really am. So kind of him. He was delighted you noticed. He got the original cutting back from Devon, the Dart Valley. He was born there. Devin Violets. There's nothing quite like them. Well, I really must be going now. I hope all will be well this evening. What? The announcement in the Gazette. A murder will be taking place here at 6.30. Oh, yes. If this isn't a game or some sort of joke, it would be very worrying for all of you. We're made of sterner stuff than you think, Miss Marble. Yes, but surely, Miss Blacklock, if a murder is going to take place here, there has to be a victim. If I were you, the question I'd be asking myself is, who is going to be murdered? You 
you like what I do, Miss Blacklock? Yes. Oh, yes. Those look very nice, Mitzi. Thank you. The dip, the... It's not quite perfect. And in the sandwiches, I put the pâté. The pâté? What's my pâté de foie gras? It is delicious. It was a present. It was from the false notes. I was saving it for a special occasion. You tell me to make sandwiches. I do it. I was thinking rather of cheese. <gasps> Your English cheese. It is like soap. We <laughs> like it. Do you need me anymore? No, thank you, Nancy. Are you going out? I have some, some things to do in the dining room. Then I go to my room and lock myself up. <laughs> well, before you go, do you mind letting the guests in when they've arrived? I've decided to keep the front door locked this evening. I have everything here. Head cook and bucket washer. What's a washer? Yes, that too. Seriously. Do you? Of course not. It's too silly for words. You don't sound too sure of yourself. I certainly am. It's just someone who wants an excuse for a drink. Let's forget it, shall we? Poor Aunt Letty. It's rather getting on top of you, isn't it? No, it isn't. But you keep going on about it. It's stupid. It's childish. And I've heard enough. Do you understand? What? They're all out on the back lawn. Oh, goodness, the ducks. I must have forgotten that they're playing with them. Have you been outside like that? What, Letty? Without a coat? Only to the bottom of the garden to throw some rubbish away. Dr. Robertson will be very annoyed, and I'm not sure I shouldn't tell him. Please don't. It'll be the death of me. I um, should go let them in. Oh, it'll be a minute. I'll do it. No, no, Philip. You just got home. Sit down and relax. I'll go. Thank you, Patrick. I'd rather do it myself. If I had my galoshes on, I would have done it for her. <laughs> I noticed you stayed discreetly in the background. Are you afraid of getting your hands dirty? No. My new dress is a matter of fact. That must have cost a bomb. A friend bought it for me. Oh, it's like that, is it? That's no questions. Death wore black chiffon. I beg your pardon? If you were the murderer, death wore black chiffon would be very appropriate, don't you think? If you're trying to be funny, I once read a book called that. Uh, are you sure, buddy? No, no, that's not it. Let me see. It was called Death wore black lingerie. <laughs> no, no, I'm wrong. 
just wore a bra and panties. <laughs> there, that's it. Nice book, though there were some things I didn't quite understand. <laughs> There's something you can do for me, Patrick. Anything. There's not much sharing. Put this away again, anyone, please. There's more than half a bottle. It's been open a long time. But. Here are Mrs. Spettenham and her son, Edmund Spettenham. Thank you. You're welcome. Why you laugh at me? It wasn't you. It was something else. Honest. You. You keep out of my kitchen. Missy! This way, please. Clara! Edmund! How nice of you to call. We were just passing Letty. Really? Yes, isn't that right, Edmund? Yes, Mother, that's <laughs> right. Yes, I was in the car with Edmund, who drives much too fast, you know. And I said, oh, look, it's little paddocks. Letty would never forgive us if we didn't drop it and say hello. And Edmund said, um, what was it you said? What a good idea. <laughs> and I said, yes, isn't it? So, here we are. Well, uh, do sit down. It's so great that you called. Isn't it, Bunny? What is Letty? Clara and Edmund came by to see how we were. Oh, but this morning you said they were bound to call in. Bursting with curiosity, you said. After seeing the announcement in the Gazette, you did see it, didn't you, Clara? <laughs> but was, was it the one right at the bottom of the personal column? Yes, I may have noticed it. Julia said you'd be here too. Wild horses would keep you away. <laughs> well, anyway, now that you are here... Totally unexpected. Patrick! Um, let's have a drink, shall we? Drinks. Oh, yes, of course. Sherry, Mrs. Sweater? Uh, yes, that will be fine, thank you. Edmund? Thank you. Well, Philippa, you looked busy this morning. Things got even more hectic after you left. Oh, I see. Having secret meetings, then? Hatching something? There's nothing secret about it, and we aren't hatching anything. No, 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 by no means. You see, I had to call at Dice Hall for some honey for Miss Lucas. That's your story. Julia. Yes, darling? I should be careful, otherwise a few things might get out that the rest of us find most peculiar. Drinks, everyone. Any excuse to get us drinking past 9.30, eh? <laughs> we really are too old to be drinking like this. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. I lay straws with a dash of cyanide. Oh well, you can only die once. Cheers. Lassie, yes dear. When is the murder going to take place? 6.30. Are you the murderer? Me? Of course I'm not. Well, you seem to know all about it. Well, it was in the Gazette, wasn't it? I'm sure everyone should be clear and have seen it by now. Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, it's nearly 6.30, and if it's going to happen at all, it'll happen at any moment now. Cigarette, anyone? No, thank you. Yes, please, Letty. Do you have any more of those matches? 
is? Lost. That was the last one. Someone put the lights on. They must be fused. Where's the fuse box? In the hallway. I'll go. What the hell? What is it? <laughs> Nothing. Stay calm or soon have the lights back on. Nothing. Nothing. It's all right, buddy. Stay calm. I'm frightened. There's nothing to worry about. <gasps> He's unconscious. Must have knocked himself out. Who is it? I have no idea. Better get his gun before he comes around. Oh, someone, please help me. Oh, 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 oh. Someone get more brandy. Brandy, we best call a doctor. No, no, I, I shall be all right. It's only my ears. Why the handkerchief? I don't suppose the police would be oh, very happy if I got my fingerprints yes. all over it. Police? They'd have to be called in, Mother. Oh. Is that Lipsy? Yes, someone seems to have locked her in the dining room. Why do that? I've no idea. Hadn't we better let her out? I'll do it. No, there might be a... I'll do it in a second. Are you feeling better, Letty? Yes, thank you. What happened? What oh, Letty's been shot at? By this man? Of course. Is he coming round? No. I wonder who he is. I know who he is. His name is Rudy Schertz. And he's dead! <gasps> Fires two shots from here, hits the wall, and then shoots himself. If he tripped, he could have done it accidentally, sir. Are they all here now? Yes, sir, grumbling and moaning. Oh. Now I should keep an eye on that Edmund Swettenham. Why? Seems to be a bit of a left wing intellectual. How'd he get that impression last night? He's been a bit bullshy with me, sir. He was having a go at the force this morning, sprouting out about a. Gestapo methods. Oh, Christ. Why do I always pick the awkward ones? You do seem to attract them, sir. Why can't I get a nice, law-abiding, peaceful lot who do as they're told and answer my questions with a certain amount of civility? Not your style, sir. Once. Just once. That's all I ask. Somebody up there doesn't like me, Sergeant. And what's more, that lot out there are trying to compound the felony. Shall I wheel them in? There's nothing else for it, is there? Afraid not, sir. Not that door. It's been sealed for years. Come along, everyone. Your attention, please. Yes, yes, I'm Quiet, please. Please! It's very good of you. I do appreciate your cooperation. This is very inconvenient, Inspector. It's Saturday. There's shopping and lots of jobs to be done. I understand your problem, Mrs. Swettenham, but may I remind you, a man died here last night. Right on the spot where you're standing. <laughs> Whilst it may not seem overly important to you, it is to me in society in general. So, if it's not asking too much, I'd like you to push your shopping to the back of your mind and answer a few questions. I would have thought there were enough questions asked last night. 
Ah, uh, yes. Well, perhaps you don't think the same way as me, young man. Yes, I should think that's the answer, but we think differently. But, if you cast your mind back, way, way back to last night, you'd surely recall that I allowed you all to go home and get some rest on the understanding that you cooperate fully this morning. Well, it's perfectly clear what happened. This man, Shares was his name, I believe. Yes. Broke in here, intending to steal from Miss Blacklock, all the rest of us, fired the shots to scare us, tripped in the dark, and killed himself. Poor devil. <laughs> I understand you're a bit of a writer. Well, yes, I do write. Well, I hope all your plots aren't as obvious as that. Otherwise, I don't think I'll be very interested in reading any of your books. <laughs> now, uh, could we get on with this? I'm sure we're all willing to do anything you ask, Inspector, but it has been quite a shock to us, you know. I appreciate that, Miss Blacklock, but as you see for a start, he didn't break in. No locks broken, no windows forced. He or... must have come in through the back door. I did. And, as I was saying when Miss Marple interrupted me, there's your very bad habit of leaving the doors unlocked for all and sundry to come and go as they please. I locked the front door. For once. And everybody does it. Leaves them open, I mean. Foolish. Very foolish. I suppose I must have left the back door unlocked when I went to go let in the ducks. Now, Miss Blacklock, you said you knew this, uh, Rudy Shirts. Hardly knew, Inspector. His father owned a hotel in Montreal. I spent many years in Switzerland helping to heal my sister, and I used to have a meal there occasionally. Recently, I had lunch at the Royal Spa Hotel at Men and Wells, and he was there. He recognized me, said that he was here to get a firm grounding on the hotel business. However, I don't recall this meeting at all, but a few days later, he called on me here. He's been here before? Yes. I remember Letty. You were very upset. He asked you for some money. That's right. He gave me some story about how his father had been taken seriously ill, and he desperately needed money for his fare. Well, I believed he was lying. After all, if his family owned a hotel, surely they could pay for the fare. I told him I had no intention of sending the money, but what troubled me most was that he didn't make a fuss of it. He just left, like a lamb. I see. You think he may have called here purely to look around, see what the layout of the house was, that sort of thing? I suppose so. I didn't think much of it until now. Not that it would have done any good. I don't keep more than a few pounds in the house. Valuables? Nothing. Jewelry? Silver? No, nothing much. The silver's reasonable. Mitzi was cleaning it last night. And not touch it. It's nothing to you, secret police officers. You come here, you blame me all the time. It was the same where I come from. Torture, interrogation. But I do not crack, you understand. I do not break. I tell them nothing. Yeah. Is she always like this? Torture me. You get nowhere. I am innocent. Innocent. I was locked in the dining room. That is my 100% alibi, as you said. And a very good alibi it is. Perhaps too good on the surface. Now, just sit down and try to remember that I'm not too keen on the histrionics. I will not. Ah, ah, ah. Sit. Let me say this to all of you. I don't want to be here any more than you do. It's a very good football match on at Milchester this afternoon. I'd very much like to see, but other things are more pressing. Please, can we continue this interrogation without any more interruptions? Miss Blacklock, we've established that you knew Rudy Shirts. Excuse me, Inspector. So sorry to interrupt, but I knew him too. You didn't mention this last time. <laughs> I did. Well, you weren't here at the time, and when you arrived on scene, you rather neglected me. Did I? Oh. I suppose it was because I didn't arrive until after the um, auction took place. Hmm. Rather like turning to the end of the book to see who the killer is, eh? As an analogy, it doesn't work, because that's cheating. I usually figure out who it is without resorting to those tactics. Do you turn to the last page, Inspector? If only I could. You said you knew, uh, Rudy Shurs. I ran into him at the Royal Spa whilst I was having intensive treatment for rheumatism. He made up my bill. Ah. There were one or two discrepancies, which I can fail to notice, of course. Of course. He was on the make, as they say in Troy. Once I pointed out these discrepancies to him, he apologized profusely, but we both already knew. 
Did you report him? Well, there was nothing I could actually prove. He does seem to be a bit of a villain. I'll know more soon. The Swiss police are running a checkup on him. I'd like you all to take up the exact positions you were in last night as far as possible. That is. Do you want me to leave? I was coming up the drive. You were outside when you heard the shots, were you? I was. You'll soon realize that I came in through the back door. Mitzi was banging about in the dining room. I let her out and we both came out here. See what you can do. Keep an eye on her. I don't want her banging about again. I'm not- Shush, shush, shush! Not and shush again! Come along, Mitzi. Now, come along, everyone, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. The lights go out, flashlight comes on, and turns on you. My hands were tough. I thought it was a joke. Then he barked at me. I was so frightened I put my hands up so high. Like this! He couldn't complain of that, could he? I thought he was going to shoot me. You're Miss Blacklock's niece. Yes. That's the kind of answer I like. Full of confidence. You are Miss Blackhawk's niece. I just don't see what my relationship with Aunt Letty has to do with it. May I suggest you leave that up to me to work that out? In any case, I was merely trying to establish who you are. You can check up on it if you like. I will. Your mother lives in the south of France, I understand. Uh, she's lived there for some time. It suits her health. Thank you. Mrs. Swettenham. Yes? The light fell on you next, Mrs. Swettenham. I was totally dazzled. I couldn't see a thing. I just heard that voice. Frightening. Gushable. You haven't all that long returned to this country, is that right? Yes. My husband was in the diplomatic service. He died abroad. Naturally, I returned with Edmund. And where were you? Abroad, that is. Why? Turin. My husband was in the trade delegation there. I don't see what my personal life has to do with it. If my knowledge of geography hasn't entirely deserted me, Turin is not all that far from the Swiss border now, is it? No. Thank you. Just what are you insinuating? Life fell on you next, didn't it? Yes, it did. Thank you very much. You're not going to ask me any more questions? Not right now. Mrs. Hayes! The light never fell on you at all, did it? No, it didn't. You were actually facing the door. That's right. Was it possible to see this man at all? Not really. It was difficult to see much of anything. But you were facing the door. It was very dark. I suppose I can make out a shape, but nothing more. How long ago did your husband die? Why? What on earth does that have to do with this? I'd like to know when and why you came to live in this country. I still don't see what the relevance is. Does it strike you as all that virtually all of you are newcomers to Chipping Cleghorn? It hasn't occurred to me until now. Although... I came here a few months ago because I was offered a job restoring the, gar restoring the gardens at Dyer's Hall. I'm a trained horticulturist. That's nice. Gardener. Miss Bonner! You're not going to give me the third degree, aren't you, Inspector? Not right now, but you can tell me what you saw. If anything, I'd be very grateful. You were in a good position to see Miss Blacklock and the gunman if the lights had been on. Yes, I was. I want you to think very hard and tell me what you saw before the lights went out. Before? Yes. And we'll see what you remember after the lights went out. Let me see. Letty was holding the vase. Nobody did. It was holding the cigarette box. I've been hanging them around. Oh, I remember now. You were holding the cigarette box, not the vase. Then what, Miss Bonner? The flash. From the torch? No. Oh. There was a flash. It must have been the light from the cigarette box. We always keep it polished. Ah. Then it was dark. Then he fired his gun at poor Letty. How could anyone do that? You actually saw him fire the gun? I saw the gun fire at Letty. Thank you, Miss Bonner. He should be locked up. Funny. He's dead. Serves him right. <laughs> he tried to murder Letty. You were by the door. Having a few drinks? Well, I only had one, you know. 
Whatever you say. But, you were by the door. No, I was by the door, but he told me to move away from it. After the first two shots were fired, he brushed past me and I tried to trip him up. That's when you think he fell? Yes, I suppose so. And after that, you went out to mend the fuse? Yes. I didn't mend it, I simply switched the fuse around. It was easier. It was easier for me, of course, because I knew where the fuse box was, how to open it, and which circuit was affected. You're Miss Simmons' brother? I'm a year older. Miss Blacklock's nephew? Uh, no. I understood you were. We're second cousins, Inspector. His mother's my first cousin. Our mother used to call her aunt, so when we came to live here, well... How long have you been living here? Three months, I should think. So the three of you have really known each other since June or July this year? I didn't know them as children. I see. Would you mind standing in the exact position you were in last night when the shots were fired, please? Well, that was a very narrow escape, wasn't it? I was extremely fortunate. Right. Well, that wasn't too painful now, was it? We can go. You can, but do all stay in the village. Don't go on any sudden and unexpected holiday or anything like that. Excuse me, Inspector. Yes, Miss Marple? You haven't questioned me yet. But you didn't turn up until after the uh, action. Suppose I was lying. Suppose I was really shed to compass. I could have easily locked Mitzi in the dining room. I could have hidden for a while. I know the layout of the house and then turned up when it was all over. In that case, I'll put you under arrest. But I didn't, and I wasn't his accomplice. In that case, you're free to go. <laughs> How very disappointing. You're having a game with me, Inspector. And you with me, Miss Marple. I shall question you when I'm ready. Very well. Thank you, everyone. I shall be talking to all of you again soon. Miss Blacklock, I'd like you to stay. Please sit down, Miss Blackwell. Miss Blackwell? Yes? I think it's cards on the table time. I don't understand, Inspector. I think you do. Someone tried to kill you last night. Oh, no! No, Inspector! I think there's no doubt of it. But, but why? I hope we're going to find out. Uh, I'm sorry, Inspector, but I don't think Rudy Shows came here to kill me. Why wait until last night? Why invite witnesses? What makes you think it was Rudy Schertz? Well, wasn't it? He did place the advertisement in the Gazette. Well, there you are. It sort of proves my point. If Rudy Schertz wanted to kill me, he could have waited behind a shrub and popped me off when no one was about. No, I'm sorry, Inspector. I don't think he came here to kill me. Someone could have put him up to it. Put him up to it? Someone wanted you dead and is prepared to pay Rudy Shares to do the job. You see, I'm not so sure his death was an accident. How could it be anything else? He tripped and shot himself. No. Supposing there was someone else. And what if this someone assumed that he'd done his job and killed you? Would it be safer to shoot Rudy Shares so there was no possibility of him getting caught by the police and telling us the truth? I see exactly what you're saying, Inspector. You agree with me then? No, because why? Why should anyone want to kill me? I have a feeling you might be able to answer that. I can't! I have no enemies that I know of. I'm on friendly terms with everyone in the village. It's too ridiculous! Who gets your money if you die? Is this really necessary, Inspector? Please, Miss Blacklock, indulge me. Answer my question. Patrick and Julia. I see. Oh, and I should also mention that. Bunny gets the furniture with small annuity. So I guess it makes her suspect too. The point is, there is no one who should want to kill me. Frankly, I'm not worth murdering. But nevertheless, all three of them benefit. And not one of them would harm a hair on my head. You'd be surprised what people do for money. Really, Inspector? I find this conversation extremely distasteful. You are accusing people that are very dear to me, who I trust, yes, with my life. Have you got anything of great value? No, nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. Those pearls you're wearing? They are 
priceless, oh. but only to me. They belong to my sister. They are very close. I wear them all the time. It somehow, and I don't suppose you'll understand this for one minute, keep me in touch with her. I'd like to think I'm not insensitive, but I still think someone is trying to kill you. Will you come back to the wall, please? Now, if he merely intended to frighten you, he could have fired the shots into the ceiling. But think. The clock struck the half hour. Everyone turned to it. The lights went out. The door swung open. Miss Marble! <laughs> Give me that gun! It's a toy! Those pieces of potato! What is this all about? I couldn't help wondering how that young man was able to be in three places at once, fusing the lights. Locking Mitzi in the dining room and opening a door with a gun in one hand and a torch in the other. I couldn't. I had to put the gun down, open the door and pick it up after. Seems to me he was a very athletic young man. Good point, Miss Marple. Inspector, that's praise indeed. Tell me, do you think Rudy Shirts had an accomplice? Miss Marple? Yes. Would you like my job? Yes, but I'd <laughs> never make a policeman. You think not? I'm not tall enough. I only put on that little charade in hopes it would prove that Rudy Shirts came here to murder Miss Blackhawk. Perhaps I've been trying to convince her of that myself. Perhaps now you'll believe it's not just the ranting of an hysterical old copper. Someone is trying to murder you, and it can happen any time now. Just because Miss Marble agrees to you, it doesn't mean to say that you're right. I'm trying to save your life. I believe that too, Miss Blackhawk. Somewhere there's a reason, and you know it. It could be hidden deep in your mind. You've got to bring it out. There's no reason, I'm sure. Please, think. It's my understanding that one day you could inherit millions. Miss Marple? Uh, Bunny told me when we were having coffee at the Bluebird Coffee House. Oh, trust Bunny. I shall have to do something about her. Why have you been keeping something back from me? It's got nothing to do with you or this case. In fact, it is most unlikely to happen. Am I going to have to ask Miss Marple or Miss Bunner for the details? Miss Marple is referring to Randall Godler's will. Randall Godler? He was a financier inspector, very flamboyant. Heard as a genius in the city. He was. I was his personal secretary for nearly 20 years. He made millions. Yes, but without you, it might not have even happened. Oh, well, if you know so much about it, Miss Marple, why don't you tell the inspector? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. No. I'm sorry, Miss Marple, but you should know that Bunny does get some things muddled. He may have gotten a strange version of the truth. What is the truth? I loaned Rondo Godless some money in his early days. Everything I had. He was up against it, a step from losing all that he'd worked for. I more or less became a junior partner. When he died, he left a fortune. To whom? His wife, Belle, in trust for her during her lifetime. When she dies, it comes to me. And you believe this has nothing to do with the shooting? How can it? Who really sure to know me, let alone Randall Gowler, and his will wasn't made public. It could be looked up in Somerset House. Tell me. How does Belle go the field towards you? Well, we've known each other for years. You were always great friends. Bunny tells me her health isn't too well at the moment. Belle was always very weak, but Randall Gobler said she'd outlive us all. Wouldn't surprise me. Problem is, she's had trouble remembering anything or anyone these days. Poor Belle. I should go see her, but she lives all the way in Scotland. And it's such a long way. You know, Inspector, I've had a very good reason for murdering Belle for years. <laughs> so when she dies, you get everything? Well, most of it. What happens if you die before she does? It goes to Pip and Emma. Who? Yes, does sound funny, doesn't it? Randall had a sister, Sonia. They fell out when she married a man called Dimitri Stanfordus. He sounds Greek, but he wasn't. Made your piano somewhere. A real rogue, very handsome. Randall hated him. So he cut Sonia out of his will. That's quite right, Inspector, but it didn't matter. She was rich in her own right. Anyway, 
Belle and Randall's lawyers advise them to put somebody else in the will in case I die before her. Very sensible. Trouble is, the only communication we received from Sonia was a letter to Belle two or three years after she married, saying she was deliriously happy and had given birth to twins. Hey, Bernard. Yes. I suppose their names must have been a joke between her and her husband. One was born just before midnight and one just after. So there's a young man and young lady who stand to become millionaires. If? If you die before Belle Gotha. Does anyone know what happened to Sonia and her husband? Last we heard, they were living in Eastern Europe. How old would Pip and Emma be now? 25, 26, somewhere in there. They must be found. Have you any idea what they look like? No. There were no photographs, and even if there were, they wouldn't help us to know what Pip and Emma looked like now. What about Sonia? They could resemble her in some way. Sonia. Oh, she was dark, temperamental, very attractive. Pip and Emma. Or Sonia, Inspector. Perhaps her husband, Dmitri Stanislas, wasn't it? You said he was a rogue. Perhaps he bought through all of her money. She could stand again if you, if you died first. Dmitri would too. Yes. So, Miss Blacklock, there are at least four people who stand to benefit from your death. Oh, you can discount Patrick and Julia now. If I die, they only get a pittance. At this stage, I don't believe in discounting anyone, and I advise you to do the same. Mitzi? Is anything wrong? Um, no, Mitzi. Nothing at all. Then why you look at me so strange? I hadn't realized. No, Mitzi. Nothing at all. Just a minute, Mitzi. What do you want, policeman? Have you any relations in this country? Why do you want to know? Any English relatives? Distant cousins, perhaps? Me? English? If it was not so funny, I would be insulted. Sometime I'll need to see all your papers. Everything is in order. I report to see immigration authorities every three months. Calm down. It's routine. I'm obliged to do it. Why not arrest me now? You think I do this thing, this murder? Very well. Arrest me. Put on the handcuffs. Oh. Good. You're arresting her, aren't you, Inspector? I don't care. Arrest me. Put your hands down. I'm not in the mood. You should arrest her, Inspector. She stole a car. I'm not steal anything, you stupid old woman. Mitzi! No, I don't care. She accuses me of stealing. I do not. Uh, what is going on, Miss Bonner? One of your favorite coffee cups, Letty. It's missing. They were on the Welsh dress in the kitchen, and she won't let anyone go in there. There were six, now there are only five. Mitzi, I won't be angry with you. D did you break one? First murder, and now stealing. Why? Because I am a foreigner. That's the truth. It's her. She is the screwy one. She has done something with it and forgotten. Mitzi, do apologize to Miss Bonner. No, I go. You find someone else. I not blacken your doorstep again. My apologies, Inspector. Regrettable, but she's always like this. I'm afraid she can't leave. Oh, she won't. She's got such, she's such an explosive person. And a liar. You should check up on her, Inspector. I dare say we'd all be surprised if we knew the truth about her. Well, at least she makes a good coffee. It's the only thing she doesn't put garlic in. <laughs> oh, would you like some, Miss <laughs> Please, thank you. Inspector? No, nor in our field, mind. I'd like to take another look around. Perhaps you'd like to show me the rest of the house? Of course. Uh, Miss Bunn, would you pour the coffee? Oh, yes. You like it black, don't you? No, I like it white. Oh, that's right. The glass was glass, wouldn't have <laughs> She was better at this than I was. I don't know how you drink it black. I like mine with lots of milk and sugar. I've always had a sweet tooth. Letty was always teasing me about it when we were children. <laughs> Yes, well, not many friendships last as long as yours. She rescued me, you know. From what? I was destitute. Surely not. Don't you believe me? Well, yes, of course. She's so good. Not only to me, 
To everyone? Yes, she does seem to take a lot of people under her wing. Too trusting. Too trusting by far. She doesn't seem like the type who's easily fooled. She's not a woman of the world, you know. Not like us. <laughs> yes, but she worked for Randall Cotho all those years. Oh, yes. Who told you that? You did, the other day. It's a secret. Don't tell anyone. Poor Lottie. Poor, poor Lottie. Whenever I think of her, that poem comes to mind. What poem is that? Well, the one that goes, in sad affliction, bravely born. What sad affliction? I... What? Sad affliction? All those years looking after her sister, only she would have done it. Yes, uh, tuberculosis, wasn't it? Gave up everything. Everything. No one appreciates her. Not like I do. And that Patrick, he's always taking advantage of her. He seemed like such a nice young man. <laughs> he keeps borrowing money and never paying it back. It would surprise me if it was him who put that Rudy shirt to coming here last night. Always playing practical jokes. They were probably going to shell the proceeds so he could give Letty the money he owes her. He's like all the young people these days. They've no respect for anything. Things aren't all that easy for them, you know. Come and look at this. Come. See what one of them did to this beautiful sideboard. There, a cigarette burn. It's only the young people who smoke in this house. What's a shame. Such a beautiful piece. Yes, and so is this. Dresden, we have two. A shepherd here and a shepherdess in the spare room. No, no, this is the shepherdess, Bunny. Oh, I thought the shepherd was in this room. Oh dear, oh dear, this dreadful business, Miss Marple. It really has got on top of me. I'm more confused than ever. Good gracious, I'm sorry, Miss Bunny. The violets, they've died. I was sure they would last throughout the week. How silly of me. I forgot to water them. But, no <coughs> wonder. Well, don't worry. I'll bring you lots more. And I think I know somebody who can fix the sideboard of yours. You'll never even notice it's been damaged. That would be wonderful. I... I really must be going now. Must you? It's so nice to have someone to talk to who understands. I... I have lots of shopping to do. No, that one's always sealed up. This table used to be in front of it, that people knew they couldn't go through. Seems like a good idea. It was, but Philippa suggested it would be better here. She said it would integrate the rooms more. It was two rooms originally, you see. Does it have a key? Ah, the builders were very clever. You see, the same key fits in all the downstairs rooms. So sensible. But there's a different key for each bedroom. So sensible. I'll show you. But what is that key? Oh, here it is. You see, <coughs> it's very stiff, but you still can't open it. What are you doing? A door has been opened and I. I'm sorry. Miss Marple! Oh, Letty, it was all my fault. I was explaining to Miss Marple about Philippa suggesting you move the table away from the door. It's all my fault, Miss Blacklock. I have an insatiable curiosity. Please don't blame Miss Bunner. It really was all of my fault. No. There's no need for an apology. I'm afraid with all that's been going on, I've been quite overwrought. <laughs> yes, my nerves are a little on edge, too. This door has been opened since they turned the two rooms into one. And that was at the end of the last century. Ah, Miss Bunny. I saw I just found your missing coffee cup in the bushes by the duck pond. How lovely. I should have asked you to find it in the first place, shouldn't I? You being a detective. Yes. <laughs> it's all part of the job. We find missing budgerages as well. But how does my coffee cup get there? Well, using my obvious powers of detection, I would say <coughs> someone threw it there. Have you any idea why there should be oil in it, Miss Blacklock? 
I think I do, Inspector. The hinges, they've been oiled. Quite recently, I'd say. What? So then it would open silently. So if Rudy Scherz had an accomplice, it could have been anyone in this room last night. Why should he use this door? Well, whoever he is, he's the only one who knows this door can be opened. Let's hope I'm here when he does. Eleven thirty. I must head back to the station. Miss Marple, would you like a lift? Oh, thank you. How very kind. Goodness, I forgot to let in the ducks again. Can I help you, Letty? Well, all right. I suppose you must be wondering what the fuss is these days. Thank you, Miss Marple. Of course. Goodbye, Miss Marple. Bye. to leave the honey. About the party as well. But we couldn't have gone along with it now, could we? No. That's what I said. I'll have to cancel my birthday party after this dreadful business. I don't mind. It, it doesn't upset me. I mean, a man none of us knew broke into our house, tried to rob us, almost killed Aunt Letty. And just because he got what he deserved, poor Bunny has to suffer? I can't believe that even you can be so insensitive, Patrick. I can be quite sensitive. I mean, I have noticed the way you and Edmund Swettenham look at each other. What's wrong, Patrick? Are you jealous? Oh, whatever's this? Lovers too. It most certainly is not that! <laughs> Careful, darling. You know what they say about the lady who doth protest too much. Oh dear, oh dear, please don't argue. I have such a headache. All the shooting and all those dreadful questions. All the pain is quite devastating. Why don't you take something for it? No, no. I shall be all right. Don't be silly. I can't find my aspirins anywhere, Letty. There's a box of aspirin on my bedside table. Thank you. But I'm quite capable of withstanding it. Of course. But why suffer? Well, shall I go? No. 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 The least I can do is get them myself. Miss Blacklock. She's quite been stunned, going so long before mentioning a headache. Well, you said she developed a stinker, and you're right. It's a pity we couldn't have had the party. She was looking forward to it so much. I'm just glad it was her idea to cancel it. I mean, where's the harm? If we have just tea and Mitzi's cake with just the family. It's sure up nowhere. Only in teeny weeny party. Oh, blast you. Now you're making me feel dreadful. I'll buy you a milk stout down at the one time. Oh, go away! <laughs> but I suppose we're going to have tea anyway, so why not? <laughs> Good. Patrick, tell Julie and Mitzi we're going to have the cake after all. Right up. Philippa, I don't mean to be inquisitive, but there is something bothering you, is there? Uh, well, um... Uh, is it anything to do with your son? No, no, he loves his school, or the fees, um... They're obviously going to be a bit of a problem. Ah, and there is something. It'll be all right. Anything that you tell me will be said in the strictest confidence. There's nothing to tell, really. Very well. But I have something to tell you that may ease your worries. There's nothing I can't cope with. Philippa, I know you're very independent, and I can't help you much now, but 
Soon. Please, Letty, don't give it another thought. I shall be able to manage. I want you to know, I spoke with my solicitor yesterday. I'm changing my will. Besides Bunny's annuity, everything goes to you. Me? But I don't... You can't be serious. Oh, yes, it's all in hand. Uh, but I don't want to. You mustn't do this. What about Patrick and Julia? Patrick and Julia have no claim on me. You are my main beneficiary. Why? Why are you telling me this? Well, I don't see any trouble in telling people I'm changing my will. I, I can't let you do this. Believe me, Philippa. There's a very good reason for what I'm doing. You may not get much if I die now, but if I live, you'll come into a lot of money. Die? You're not going to die. You never know. Here are Miss Marple, Miss Fettenham, and Edmund Fettenham. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Marple, Clara, Edmund. This is a surprise. Is anything wrong? Wrong? <laughs> I suppose when the three of us turn up these days, it does seem as if trouble isn't far behind. Well, I certainly hope it is. I've had enough for one weekend. It's all my fault, uh, dropping in like this. I called on Claire and Edmund to suggest it. I hope you don't mind. It seems such a shame Bunny had to cancel her party. We thought we'd bring a little present each. I'm afraid we haven't got anything very exciting. But how kind. We won't stay, oh, of course. No, no, do sit down. We were all just going to have tea and Mitzi's special cake. I'm sure Bonnie will be so pleased. Yes. We'd love to stay. Thank you. Yes. Is that all right with you, Philippa? Yes. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, it looks as if it's going to be a party after all. No, it's not going to be a party, just tea. Oh, by the way, Letty, did you find the honey? Oh, yes, I did. I'm so sorry, Clara. Thank you. Because I came in through the back door and I couldn't find you anywhere. So silly of me, forgetting to leave it in the first place. We got all the way home before we noticed, didn't we, Edmund? I'm sure we could have left it until some other time. But it was your idea. Well, we needed it anyway. Mitzi always uses it for her cake. You see. Well, Miss Marple. Looks like this time you'll be in at the kill. Don't say things like that, Edmund. That's something we all want to forget. How can we? It's by no means over. I'm afraid Edmund is right. Uh, I'm sure the inspector is satisfied. I don't think he is. You think someone paid very shares to kill Aunt Letty and that they'll try again? Patrick! You shouldn't have mentioned that. Good God! That puts us all under suspicion. Yes, I'm afraid Inspector Craddock has to include all of us here now. Yes. How long were you out on hall, Miss Marple? I mean, we only have your word for it, that you're coming up the drive when the shots were fired. <clears throat> My dear boy, I'm sure I'm very high on his list. Really? And you seem to get on so well with him. I think he finds me mildly amusing. Patrick, <laughs> why don't you go see if Bunny's coming? Surely there's not going to be any more unpleasantness. By that you mean murders. Do you have to? Well, I don't think there should be any more of those either. So, let's try to relax and enjoy ourselves. She's coming. Happy birthday, everybody! But I cancelled my party. Oh, we all thought we'd just have some tea and cake. Oh, what a lovely surprise. And here's something to wish you a very happy birthday, Miss Bunner. Thank you. That is kind. I'm afraid it's only handkerchiefs. Oh, <laughs> just what I wanted. <laughs> it's only apples from the garden. What a lovely thought. And I have brought you some honey. How oh, kind. But I'm afraid the bees aren't so very busy right now, so it's only half a jar. <laughs> oh, well, that can't be helped. Yes. I must take these aspirin, Letty. I have a thumping headache still. Uh, Patrick, there's some soda water on the sideboard. Aren't I silly having a headache on my birthday? Well, you'll soon feel better. Yes. What a marvelous cake! I just sell myself. This time I put a special secret ingredient in. Give it that extra bit of flavor. Make it more than perfect. Have you noticed the candle bunny? Yes. Only one. Well, of course. We couldn't fit all 21 candles now, could we? Mm. Oh, blow out your candle bunny. <laughs> Do hurry up and cut.
excited, Bunny? Yes, we're all dying to try it. Of course. You know how I am. My hands get so shaky. Oh. Oh. It's the best as I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Who's first? You! You're the birthday person. You must eat the first slice. Oh yes. Go on, Bunny. I'll cut the rest. Oh! Don't forget to make a wish. What are you wishing, Bunny? I'm not telling. It won't come true. <laughs> if I were you, I'd wish him dead. You're my sister. But I am. <coughs> Someone back her back. Oh, it's uh, the excitement. It must be too much for her. Uh, somebody get her brandy. Surely we should call the doctor. I'll call them. What's the doctor's number? Five, eight. I'm afraid it's no use. We're too late. Delicious death. Out. Can't last much longer. Don't worry. Don't worry? For God's sake, Patrick! We'll achieve nothing by panicking. You will help me, won't you? Haven't I? I've done everything you've asked. I know. You've been wonderful. I need you. Well, there's no way back. Can't start now. Stand, stand. I did it for you. Ah, Miss Simmons. Good morning, Miss Simmons. How are you, Mr. Simmons? Well, thank you. Uh, have you found out any more? We're making progress. We're not interrupting anything, are we? Oh, no, nothing at all. No. Well? Oh, we better go feed the ducks or something. Mr. Simmons. Yes? Did you know you've got lipstick on your collar? I didn't. I mean, I didn't put a new shirt on this morning. Well, can't blame you, can you, Miss Simmons? Hardly. Well, the docks. By the way, Miss Simmons. Yes? You said you work at the local pharmacy at the hospital, don't you? That's right. Thank you. No more urgent things. Now, Miss Blacklock. I'm not up to answering a lot of questions, Inspector. I'll be brief as I can, but you've had another lucky escape. I find it more and more difficult to accept your reasoning, Inspector. How could I possibly be the intended victim this time? Any one of us could have eaten that cake first. I know that. And Patrick's suggestion that Clarice honey had poisoned the cake. It's, it's malicious. I agree. Oh. Then how was the cake poisoned? Did it it wasn't the cake. Oh? It was these. My aspirin? Exactly. Your aspirin. The ones you normally keep by your bed. No. No. Someone wants you dead. Very, very badly. I'm frightened, Inspector. At last. Now, perhaps you'll help me find the murderer. I haven't been purposely not caught, but if I just couldn't believe that anybody would There's want no to- There's no friendship where money's concerned. Did you know that Belle Godler's condition has deteriorated recently? I knew she wasn't well. I understand from the Scottish police she's now seriously ill. I should go to her. Poor Belle. Could be poor Miss Blacklock. Pip and Emma? Yes. Yeah, but most of my mind, but... Could be a combination of them and their parents are trying to kill you. Dimitri Stavridis said he was a rogue. Would it go for his murder to get money? I'll do anything you say. Good. You must try to remember everything you can about him. Sonia and Pip and Emma, anything and everything, but son and daughter in particular, they have the most of my mind. Have you any photographs of them? No. Belle Girdler is more likely to have any photographs of them than I am. I'm afraid we drew almost a complete blank with her. They allowed the police up there to look up all over the house. We found nothing. Have you anything? What I'm hoping is that Pitt may take after his father, or Emma, her mother. Or the other way around. Exactly. 
There was an old album. I haven't seen it for years. It must be in the house somewhere. Find it. It may take a while. Would you like some help? Let me try first. Oh. I believe you wanted to see me. Yes, Mr. Ames. Do sit down. Oh dear, this sounds serious. If you lie about something, Mr. Ames, you have to cover your tracks very, very carefully. I... I don't... Yes, you do understand. Don't lie anymore. You know what I'm talking about. Everyone says we have more freedom nowadays. The world is more understanding than it ever was. Well, Inspector Craddock, try being an unmarried mother. I don't think it would work. It's not easy in a small village. So, you invented a husband. How do you think Lady Blacklock would react if she knew the truth? She strikes me as being a sympathetic and understanding person. What's more, she's no fool. I have a sneaking suspicion she may have guessed the truth. So that's why... What? She's been so kind to me. There aren't many like her. Does your son know the truth? He believes his father died. Silly. Find out sometime. Perhaps. My advice to you is to tell him, and everyone else. Will you tell the others if I don't? It's not a crime. I couldn't live with it, but it's up to you. How'd you find out? We do a lot of routine work. You've been checking up on me? Sort of. Make it sound so very casual. It isn't, but it is puzzling. Puzzling? It's only a small thing, but I'm sure you can help. It's about your son's birth certificate. Yes. It gives the name, it gives the mother's name as Philippa Ames. Well, that's me. Well, in that case, there is a problem. You see, we can't find a birth certificate for anyone with your name. Well, not one with what we know about you. I found it. Am I interrupting something? The timing is perfect. Mrs. Ames and I have just finished, for the time being. Ooh. Are there any photos of Sonia and her husband? I haven't had a chance to look yet. Is that her? No, it's Belle. Isn't she beautiful? Belle, it's Skane. Belle's that to be the place from Scotland. I'm afraid the writing is rather faded. Tell me when this one of Sonia and her husband. Dimitri, Bell, Sonia, Skane. Dimitri, Self, and Sonia. Someone got to these ahead of you, didn't they, Miss Blackhawk? It seems as if the picture's been ripped out. Letters. Oh, those will be from me to my sister. If you don't mind, I'd like to skim through these. Well... There could be something about Dimitri or Sonia. Miss Blackhawk. Mitzi, I don't want to be interrupted at the moment. I'm not interrupt. I give you sack, I go. Missy! She can't leave! Certainly. Well, I'll go after her! Of course. And when you catch up with her, you might tell her that she won't get any farther than the bus station. Inspector! Ah! A little sleuth. But just in time. People say I'm like a bad pen. Oh, but not me, Miss Marple. Not me. I saw Miss Blackbox go that Mitzi, herring down the drive like a maniac. She is rather peculiar, isn't she? Well, now that you're here, you can make yourself useful and help me with a little bit of research. Certainly, but I must speak to Miss Blackbox. It won't take long. But 
I don't think you'd want to pass up the opportunity of going through someone's old letters. Inspector, that's not like me. Who's are they? It's from Miss Blacklock to his sister Charlotte. If you find anything helpful, as well as interesting, read it out to me, please. Very well. Here's something that's been mentioned before. Oh. It refers to a disfigurement. Charlotte said it is. It's not as bad as you think it is, and you shouldn't lock yourself away. I wonder what it is, this disfigurement. It doesn't say specifically. I don't suppose it was anything much. Then why should she lock herself away? Well, in my experience, most women are extremely vain. How would you react if you had a mole on that in your nose? I wouldn't have to look at it. But most women would hide themselves behind a veil. It's mentioned here as well. I do wish you'd get out more. No one else even notices it. You see? Pure vanity. Maybe. Here's what I've been looking for. What is it? It's about Sonia. Fight you have with a brother. Sonia has such a violent temper, it's quite terrifying sometimes. Do you ever find any photographs of Sonia? They've disappeared, rather conveniently. But violent temper. Miss Blackhawk said she was dark and attractive. Makes you think, doesn't it? Does indeed, Inspector. Well, here's something interesting. You can always tell when Sonia is angry. She has this habit of clenching and unclenching her hands. Now, who does that remind you of? You've got me there. It's something I missed. And you don't miss much, do you? Julia Simmons does it when she's agitated. I've been keeping a very careful watch on that young woman. I've checked out both Julia and Patrick Simmons. The French police contacted the mother in the south of France, and she confirmed they were staying here. Really? There's no mistake? Well, unless the woman in the south of France isn't their mother. Could she be Sonia, hiding away until this is all over? The French police must have checked on her. They're very thorough. I thought we had found Emma, but I always knew there was a possibility I could be wrong suspecting Julia. She's not the only one who does that hen-clenching business. Philippa Hames does it as well. It's very observant of you, Miss Marple. Ten out of ten. <laughs> It's very frustrating that there aren't any photographs of Sonia. Yes. Sonia Gother seems to disappear off the face of the earth. I wonder what this means. Buck up, darling, and lots of love. This iodine treatment may make a world of difference. Must have been some special kind of treatment they used in those days. For what? TB. That's why Miss Blackhawk sent a sister to Switzerland. Who does that remind you of? I will admit, it does look like Clara Swetsenham, but... But what? Well, it is an old photograph, Inspector. Miss Marple, you wanted to see me? Yes, please. About the funeral service. Well, in that case, I must head back to the station. I'll take these with me, if you don't mind. I'll turn them later. Bye, ladies. Bye, Inspector. I'm, I'm so sorry to bother you at a time like this, but my nephew wanted me to tell you he's finalized all the arrangements, but he'd like to know what hymns you'd like. Lead Kindly Light was a favorite hymn. Uh, please thank him for me. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Really, sorry. Don't. Please don't. It's just... Come over me all of a sudden. What I've lost? She was my only link with the past. The only one who remembered. And now she's gone. And I'm quite alone. Quite alone. I understand. Cousins, nephews, nieces, they're all very well. But when the last person you shared your youth with is gone, then you really are alone. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, don't be, I was just leaving. Not on my account, I hope. Not at all, my dear. There's something I must do. Goodbye, Miss Blackfall. Goodbye, Miss Just you and me this morning. Mine's from Harry. He's looking forward to half term. Seems only yesterday that he just went back to school. Letty, I realize that this isn't the ideal time to mention it, but it is all right, isn't it? Letty, uh, Harry coming here for half term? Philippa? What's, what's wrong? Where are Patrick and Julia? I, I think they're upstairs. Why? I, I, I don't understand. Will you please get them for me? Patrick? Julia? Let me off the word. Shall I go? I'd like you to stay. What is it? Sit down. I just received this letter. Dear Aunt Letty, I hope it's all right for me to come to you on Tuesday. Patrick was going to write, but he hasn't. My train arrives at about 6.15. It's signed, yours affectionately, Julia. Oh, God. So this is from your sister? I'm afraid so. Then who is that woman upstairs? I can explain. Do! Julia, my real sister, didn't want to take the job up here at the hospital. She was offered a job up north at some theater as an assistant stage manager. She, uh, that's how we met Julia. I mean, the one upstairs. Her and I rather fell for each other, and as she wasn't doing anything particular, it seemed like a marvelous idea for us to swap places. So, who is that woman upstairs? I'm trying to explain that. When we first came back to England, we didn't come here. We went to parties, we saw friends. That's how we met her. And, well, I was going to tell you, but I couldn't under these circumstances. Who is that woman upstairs? Well... Who are you? Who are you? I'm Emma Stamfordis. Why you decided to stay, Miss Stafford? If I would have made a run for it, you would have only cut up with me. You would have gone out of Chipping Cleghorn. Are you going to arrest me? I'd like to know where your brother is first. I haven't the faintest idea. If this is misguided family loyalty, then... I honestly don't know. Honestly. I imagine it's a word that doesn't come easy to you. I know how you must feel about me, but... Please! Your brother, Miss Stafford. I haven't seen him since we were three years old. When my parents split up, it was decided that I go with my father and be with my mother. Let's try something different. Where's your father? Try the moon. When I was old enough to work for myself, I, he left me in Istanbul. I worked my way back here. Where's your mother then? Believe me, I'd love to know that. I searched everywhere. She made a good job of disappearing. I even went to Scotland to see if I could get some information. You went to visit Belle? Why not? She's my aunt. And, believe it or not, I hope she might help me. But it's no use. She's not part of this world anymore. Then I got to thinking about my uncle. Of course, I knew he was very rich. It occurred to me that if Aunt Belle died, I was probably his only surviving relative. So, I went along to Somerset House and looked up his will. Was I surprised? I searched everywhere for someone who even knew Lady Blacklock. Then I had the most incredible stroke of luck. Through an acquaintance, I managed to meet Patrick and his sister. When the swap was suggested, I had to stop myself from sounding too eager. I admire your self control. You must take lost effort not to take a pot shot at me. Yes? Chipping Clerk on 87? Yes? Hold on. 
Inspector, it's for you. Hello? Right, okay. Yes. What? Well, keep me informed. That's a disturbing development. Miss Marple has been left missing since she left here this morning. Goodness. That's nearly seven hours. Mrs. Stettenham and her son, Edmund. Thank you. You're welcome. What is it now, Inspector? All good time. Well, I don't like policemen turning up my doorstep and asking me to accompany them. My neighbors will be tizzle tattling for weeks. I shall be writing to the newspapers about this. That'll keep you busy for a change, won't it? Now, uh, Mitzi, you have something to tell us? Yes. I will tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. When I first saw what happened on Friday, I not do that. Huh? Well, you'll know what a little lie she is. Please. I'm in the dining room, like I say, when I hear the gun go off. I look through the keyhole, and in the little moonlight, I could see... I could see Miss Blacklock. Me? Oh, no, Mitzi! That's absurd! She couldn't possibly have seen Miss Blacklock. Go on, Mr. Swettenham. Why stop now? What? Why couldn't she have seen it was Miss Blacklock? It's because she saw, she saw you, wasn't it? Edmund? That's not possible. If Miss Blacklock dies before Belle Goda, two people stand to benefit. Emma Stanford is... And you think I'm Pip? <laughs> That's too fantastic for words. Who told you about Pip, Mr. Swettenham? I certainly haven't, and neither has anyone else in this room. That's where you're wrong, Inspector. I told him. He is a Pip, I am! You wrongly assumed Pip was a boy. Emma, you knew the truth. Why didn't you say anything? Because I suspected who you were. The Inspector was right. I didn't want to give you away. You are to all people for the book! I'm sorry, Letty, but when my mother died, I was desperate for money. Hers had gone years ago. She told me about the will, and I found out for myself that Belle Goldner was seriously ill. You were going to a lot of trouble. It was important to me. I wanted stability. Not for me, but for my son. So I came here. I was willing to help you both. Well, it was my plan to get me on your good books. And it worked, didn't it? But I grew fond of you. I even changed my will in your favor. That scared me stiff. You said that there was a very good reason for you doing it. I thought you found out who I really was, and you were scaring me off from trying to get my uncle's money. And you were coming to kill me for it. It never occurred to me, although I thought I was more entitled to it than you. But there you have it. I'm Pip. I'm glad you all know. You two have been seeing quite a lot of each other, haven't you? Well, yes. There's no need to suspect Edmund anymore, now is there? Isn't there? Mr. Swettenham's a struggling young writer, not yet published, who'd very much like to marry a rich woman. It's not true. You're in debt up to your eyeballs. Nonsense! And I can prove it. The bank, bookmaker... So what? Does that? It can't be. Not Edmund. Rich wife would have solved all your problems, wouldn't it? But... In order for her to be rich, Miss Blacklock had to die first. And you did something about that. I don't know. Edmund, you couldn't. Shall we start with your meeting Rudy Scherz in turn, Mr. Swettenham? Edmund! Wait! <laughs> Inspector, aren't you? You won't get far. You need to see your solicitor as soon as possible, Mr. Swettenham. I'm sorry about this. It all feels like a dream. I realize it must be a great shock. It all feels like a dream. I'd like to see you down at the station. Now. It won't take long. <laughs> Mr. Simmons, would you mind taking Mrs. Wettenham home, please? Yes, of course. What would a doctor wouldn't do any harm? 
come along this way. It'll be all right. Mitzi, you are a magnificent liar. I do well. Yes, I did what you asked. To the letter! Sorry for giving you such fright. You are a clever girl, Mitzi. Thank you, Miss Blacklock. I make you some coffee. You look tired. Yes, that would be great. Thank Black. you. Black and straw. A little milk, if you don't mind. Yuck! How you drink it? Horrible. <laughs> now, Miss Blacklock, you can relax. You're all perfectly safe now. Thank God. You might have told me you'd arranged it. Then, if, then you wouldn't have reacted as you did. It was a little unorthodox, but it worked. What if it hadn't? Well, I would have been in a bit of a mess, wouldn't I? What about Miss Marble? Perhaps there's some news down at the station. Hope to God she didn't find out about Edmund Swettenham before we did. You'll let me know if you hear anything? Of course. If only she hadn't interfered. See you in the morning. Goodbye, Inspector. Blackwell, nice and strong. I put just a little milk in. One drop or two. I take a liberty. I do myself some. I see. <coughs> now, Miss Blacklock, we have a nice little chat. Oh? I need money. Lots of money. Sure, Mitzi, but why tell me? I think you will help me. Uh, Mitzi, I haven't got any money to spare, that is. But soon you will be rich. Very rich. Then you give me lots of money. I uh, don't think I will. Yes, you will. Because I help you, now you help me. Mitzi, I pay you to help me with the cleaning, the house. No, no, that is not what I mean. Just now I tell a big whopper for the inspector, except it isn't a lie. Not this time. You don't know what the truth is, Mitzi. Yes, I think I do. That inspector came to me and said, Mitzi, you are a good guy. I say, yes, it's true. You tell lie for me, he said. You say when you look through the keyhole, you see Miss Blacklock in the hall. So you played your part very well, Mitzi. But I shan't be paying you for it. Ha, ah, but you tell me to lie. And it is not a lie. For once I tell the truth, I did see you in the hall, with the gun in your hand. You give me lots of money. I go to America to see my brother. You never hear from me again. But you haven't got a brother, Mitzi. If I give you money, you'll probably spend it all and come back to me for more. I see you in the hall. You have the gun in your hand. Give me the money, or I will tell the police. Very well. Go on! Phone! Phone the police! Tell them that you saw me in the hall. Tell them that you saw me with the gun. And I'll tell them you're a liar. A liar is trying to blackmail me! I'm not a liar. And you'll be put in prison, like how you say you were in your own country. I'll tell you why you were doomed. You say that you saw me in the hall holding a gun. Well, my dishonest little Mitzi, that is another one of your lies. Because the police know, and everybody who was here on Friday night knows that the key was in the lock hole. So there was no way you could have seen anything with the keyhole! Get out! Get out of my house! Now!
somewhat of a liability. Miss Marple, is this some kind of joke? I have a talent for mimicry, so I'm told. A joke in the worst possible taste. Such sensitivity doesn't become you, Charlotte. Charlotte is dead. I am Letitia. Money would all you always call you Lottie instead of Letty at the most inconvenient times. I thought it was slip of the tongue. I'm sure other people did too. But she was the only one left who knew the truth, who remembered. My dear woman, Bunny always got people's names muddled. Mitzi was often called Millie, and she often referred to you as Miss Maple. She confused you with the London story. We were all highly amused. She put you at risk every time she got muddled. You couldn't take that risk any longer. In a moment, she might give it all away. Miss Marple, you are being extremely rude. Will you please leave? Do you recognize it? It's mine. Yes, and it used to be kept here. But this one replaced it. The flex is frayed, and you can actually see the bare wire. Bunny put me on it when she was showing me the cigarette burn and the sideboard. She even told all of us it was you who was holding the vase of violets and not the cigarette box as you insisted. Another one of Bunny's models. I was holding the cigarette box. I'd been handing them round. Ask Philippa. She had one. All eyes were on the clock. When it finished striking, you simply emptied the vase of water onto the bare wire. That was the flash that Bunny saw. It also fused the lights. Very effective. What a vivid imagination you have. I shouldn't let it run away with you. I imagine your old age pension won't cover solicitor fees. I plan to live a few more years. It's your funeral. I'll risk it. When your father died, your sister, Letitia, Charlotte, decided to take you to Switzerland. Charlotte had TB. I had the money. I cared for her. I loved her. It was the right decision. You, Charlotte, were cured. However, ironically, Lenny caught pneumonia and died. You were frantic, because with her gone, the golden million slipped through your fingers. But then it occurred to you, you'd both been away from England for years. There were big similarities between the two of you. Why not swap identities with her? My birth certificate, my passport, my bank can all confirm that I am Letitia. Oh, and I even have Charlotte's death certificate. You returned to this country. Dora Bunner had heard of Letty's return and contacted her because she badly needed help. So, if I was Charlotte, that Bunny would have immediately recognized me, and any deception that I had planned would have been impossible. She did recognize you. But when you explained to her about Randall Goldler and the will, she actually agreed with you that it was your right to inherit the money, even offered to help you. Now, you were lonely, and here was someone you'd always had such a great deal of affection for, she could substantiate your deception. You took the risk. Good. Very good. Things went well for many years, until a couple of weeks ago. Then you had some bad luck. You ran into Rudy Schertz. He recognized you as Charlotte. You knew Belle could die any moment, and when the news broke that you inherited the money, knowing that you weren't Letty, there was a very good chance he would blackmail you for it. Now, you couldn't risk even the smallest chance of that happening. You'd never get rid of him. I have my ways of dealing with blackmailers, Miss Marvel. When he came to your house for the air fair, it was a heaven sent. Fine, you said. Next Friday's the 13th, and I want to throw a party for my friends. I want to give them a thrill. You put an announcement in the paper saying a murder is going to take place here at 6.30. Turn up, I'll fuse the light. You pretend to hold it. It'll scare them stiff. Then I'll give you your money. Do you go on? It's very interesting. You fuse the lights, as I explained. Went through this door. Quickly, down the corridor. Came out, fired two shots at yourself. Except you weren't there. How do you count for one of the bullets nicking out of my ear? Oh, that was too easy. Everyone knows the earlobe bleeds profusely when cut. A simple pair of scissors would do the trick. And then you shot Rooney's shirts at point-blank range. I'd love if I didn't feel some kind of pity for you. Feel free to tell the inspector all that you've told me. He'll write up the rantings of a senile woman, because we both know there's no proof. 
Oh, no! Do you remember Bunny's favorite quotation? And sad affliction bravely borne. Switzerland is now only famous for curing TB. In a letter from you to Letitia, she mentioned iodine treatment. Baffled me for a while with a little bit of research and I discovered that Swiss doctors were famous for perfecting a very special type of glandular operation. <gasps> for Goya! And I'm perfectly sure when the records are checked, we'll find it was Lottie and not Letty who successfully operated for Goya! What a pity you interfered. You're missing. Presumed dead. Edmund Swettingham stabbed you and dumped you to the river! Alright, Miss Blacklock. It's all over. You interfering? There's no need to hold on to me, Inspector. Are you all right, Miss Marple? Yes, thank you. Did very well. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. It's all over. You've no idea what a terrible time I've been through. I shall never forgive you. Never. I'm sorry, Mother. I could hardly tell you what we were up to. You would have never agreed to my doing it. How could you have deceived me like that? I said I'd help the inspector on the condition that I'd be the first to get all the facts. Because I'm convinced somewhere in all of this, there's a fascinating novel to be written. If I don't write it, someone else will. Hmm. What does the inspector want with us now? He didn't say. Does the inspector tell me to come in here and bring these? Hey, what do you think of my acting, huh? Were you <laughs> acting, Mitzi? I was even better when I pretended to blackmail Miss Blackwell. I give a cooking and I go to the stage. <laughs> I owe you an apology, Mrs. Swettenham. Mm. I'm sorry about this, but the fewer people who knew about what I was doing, the better. That's why I didn't tell you either. Suppose I wouldn't have come to Edmund's rescue and have been admitted to being hit? Well, there was no real danger in that, was there? Well, now that you're here, Got a little surprise for you. I thought you'd all be in the mood to enjoy now. Delicious death. It's already cut, so. Dig in. Mm, bad taste. Is this what's now? No, thank you. I'm on a diet. <laughs> Please.